network in India is failing and addressing organized child begging. What are the limited estimates of children's involvement in organized child begging and how do they perceive their interaction with the law enforcement and the social services? Then what are the primary challenges faced by the law enforcement and social service agencies in combating organized child begging and the what strategies can be implemented to improve their effectiveness? Then finally, how can policy reform standards targeted social interventions better address the issue of extensive literature review, which includes uh, major works from the Patrick Caron and Gloria Morena, then Mike Dottrich, uh, in the title of the is the Kids as Commodities. It's a very famous book. Then we have also gone through the UNICEF reports, several UNICEF reports, including the State of the World Children's in 2019, and the Child Protection and Traffic in 2020 reports. Then we also got a lot of uh, legal framework and case goes, which include the United Nations Convention on the Right on the Children, UNCRC, and the IAEO Convention number 182. Then, uh, Junior Justice Act 2020, uh, 2015, Immoral Tra Traffic Act 1956, and Bonded Labor System Act 1976. <coughs> then, the uh, case, uh, case studies involved Bajpat Bajao Andola Resting of India 2011, MC Mehta uh, vs. State of Tamil 1996, and uh, also Shangar uh, Kisan Rao Bhade vs. State of Maharashtra. These uh, cases are very uh, is, uh, a, Juristic perception regarding the uh, restricting uh, the need for restricting the organized child begging, and also it proposed a lot of recommendations regarding how to integrate these children who are involved in the organized child begging into a better person, better in, into the society. Then the critical gaps. Uh, after we find, uh, go through the interest uh, uh, review, the critical gaps we find is that. Uh, although several words uh, touch upon the role of organized crime in child begging, there is a lack of in-depth analysis of how these network operate and the specific challenges law enforcement faces this time in them. Then second one is that why many studies discuss the legal and social challenges of addressing child begging, few other uh, few, uh, few offer the detailed analysis of the long-term rehabilitation and the reintegration of rescued children. And also the voices of children themselves are often missing from the literature. More qualitative research that capture the limited experience of children child workers is needed to inform policy and legal reforms. Mm -hmm. So in that focus, we have uh, continued to uh, collect data and constitute this report. So the hypothesis, basically the hypothesis. Uh, the first hypothesis is that organized begging patterns, including locations, timings, and the modus operandi, will show distinct variations in each city due to difference in urban structure, demographic, and the social economic factors. The second is that the child beggars will encounter frequent risky situations, and uh, such as exploitation, abuse, and violence while engaging in begging activities with variations in the prevalence of these risks based on the specific urban context. Third one is the, the, uh, the effectiveness of legal and policy framework related to child welfare and child rights will significantly impact the pre prevalence of organized building, begging among children in each cities. And finally, specific tactics used by organized uh, begging groups will vary according to the three cities with difference in recruiting process, control mechanism and the means of revenue production. So the methodology, uh, the research methodology for this study employs a mixed uh, method approach integrating both quantitative and quantitative data collection and analysis. This approach ensures a comprehensive understanding of the social, legal uh, uh, dimensions of organized child begging by capturing numerical data and detailed personal narratives. The study focuses on the three major urban centers in India, Delhi, Mumbai and Kolkata, where organized child begging is particularly prevalent. So the, when it comes to the research design, the research emplo employs a descriptive and explorative design. Sir, the, come on the findings and the suggestions, sir. Oh, okay. Directly. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of other uh, research Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so please. Oh, okay. Since the day, uh, uh, time is stressed, mm -hmm. I will come to the uh, come to the data analysis part. So okay. this is important. Right, right, sir. Right, sir. When it comes to the quantitative uh, data analysis, descriptive statistics, cross translation, and correlation analysis has been done. When it comes to the qualitative uh, data version, thematic analysis, narrative analysis, and case study analysis has been employed for better understanding. 
and uh, uh, this comes to the uh, findings. Basically, uh, it was found that around 60 percentage of the student, uh, child workers uh, we, uh, we implemented in our survey uh, has supported that the policies and inadequate. Mostly, when it comes to the law enforcement agency and NGOs, so they supporting that around 80 percentage of of these uh, people has supporting that the policy intervention is minimal to null. Basically, we can find that when it comes to the law uh, in the uh, legal arena, there is a lack of a uh, for a specific law to counter this organized self-help, which is a major issue with respect to the enforcement by the law enforcement agencies and also the NGOs. So there is a, uh, there is a need for a specific law which, uh, for uh, countering the organized self-help. Second one is the rehabilitation policy. The, most of the programs uh, which has been started by the governments, different state governments and also the union government, to reintegrate uh, the August uh, child begging victims has been a uh, more like a uh, false uh, promise because most of these pro uh, most of these uh, uh, initiatives has not been fruitful according to the data survey that we have conducted. And uh, finally, the find the major findings that we find is that most of the children, around 70% uh, of the child children, consider it as a job rather than uh, their situation. Because they consider it as a job because they are earning money. And they are considering that they are doing some job and they are getting uh, in a, getting economic uh, financial asset in return for the job they are doing. So there is a perspective differences happening in the uh, 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 with the children when it comes to the organized child making. This need to be addressed uh, both in a sociological way and also in a legal way. So uh, the conclusion when it comes to the conclusion, but the main conclusion that we arrived is that the uh, major policy recommendation there, 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 there is a lack of policy with, uh, which is needed to counter this organized child making. And also the uh, inadequate law is and uh, is facilitating the growth of organized child -building. So uh, uh, after we constitute this research paper, our uh, main recommendation is to uh, constitute a better policy by which we can counteract the organized child -building in a better way. And also uh, to uh, enhance the rehabilitation programs for the victims of the organized child -building. So thank you. And uh, most probably when our, uh, our research will be completed by February 2020, and uh, we are considering it to bring into a more policy uh, recommendation level, and also we are uh, trying to attract more and more uh, powerful people to take up these uh, recommendations once it is being done. Thank you, sir. Thank you.